When a person has a tracheostomy tube, an extremely common complication is a medical condition called tracheitis. Unfortunately, many medical professionals do not recognize or take seriously this medical issue. A simple sore throat can quickly turn into pneumonia. Join me this week as I discuss tracheostomy tube associated tracheitis. Breaking down the word into its parts, tracheitis means trachea and itis. The trachea is often referred to as the windpipe. It is through the trachea in which a hole is created to place the tracheostomy tube. Itis simply means inflammation. You are probably familiar with other inflammatory conditions such as sinusitis, which is the inflammation of the sinuses, tonsillitis, which is the inflammation of the tonsils, and appendicitis, which is the inflammation of the appendix. Normally, bacteria and viruses are stopped via the immune system in the nose, mouth, and upper airways. As you travel down the respiratory tract, the body has fewer immune responses to invaders. In a regular person, this setup works well. However, having a tracheostomy tube means microorganisms do not have to overcome all the immune responses in the upper airways and now have direct access to the lower airways. Thus, tracheitis is more prone to happen in people who have a tracheostomy tube. Many times, bacteria are introduced into the trachea while doing a tracheostomy tube exchange. Although a person may use sterile technique and the utmost care while doing the tracheostomy tube exchange, bacteria on the skin are often pushed into the trachea when the new tracheostomy tube is inserted. Tracheitis can also occur when the tracheostomy site becomes infected. The skin infection can migrate into the airways from the natural movement of the tracheostomy tube in and out of the trachea. Although the tracheostomy tube holder keeps the tracheostomy tube secure, the tracheostomy tube still moves when you swallow, speak, sneeze, cough, etc. Movement of the tracheostomy tube can allow bacteria on the skin to enter the trachea. A third way tracheitis can occur is when a person breathes in viruses and bacteria in the air. Once the bacteria is inside the trachea, it can also move farther down the airways and infect the bronchi and lungs. This may lead to pneumonia. Tracheitis causes swelling in the trachea. This may cause pain. The trachea may feel as though it is on fire or it may feel as though someone is pouring acid down the trachea. The tracheostomy site may become red and or produce a thick yellow drainage. Tracheitis may cause a sore throat and swallowing may become painful. The infection in the trachea can also travel up the airways. The person may experience pain and pressure in the ears and a stuffy or runny nose. Inflammation can occur at the site of the tracheostomy tube. If a person has a cuffed tracheostomy tube, it may become very painful to inflate the tracheostomy tube cuff. Additionally, once the cuff is inflated, the irritation may cause the person to cough until the tracheostomy tube cuff can be deflated. <laughs> If inflating the tracheostomy tube cuff causes pain or coughing fits, please contact your medical provider. Tracheitis is often diagnosed based on a physical examination and symptom presentation. A chest x-ray is frequently ordered to rule out the possibility of pneumonia. Blood work may be completed to check inflammation markers and white blood cell count. Sputum should be collected from the tracheostomy tube, sent to the laboratory, and cultured to identify the presence of bacteria which may be causing the infection. Treatment for tracheitis usually includes drinking plenty of water, getting lots of rest, and taking over-the-counter pain medicine for pain and fever. Using bronchodilators such as inhalers or running medicine through a nebulizer may be used to help open up the airways. Antibiotics may or may not be given. Since bacterial infections are common with people with tracheostomy tubes, some doctors may automatically prescribe antibiotics if a person with a tracheostomy tube has a respiratory infection. Other medical providers will only give antibiotics if the sputum culture shows bacteria is causing the infection. 
Please note, some physicians do not take tracheitis seriously. They may brush aside the symptoms. For people with tracheostomy tubes, this medical condition can be a very serious infection which can lead to complications such as pneumonia and sepsis. If a respiratory infection is suspected in someone with a tracheostomy tube, please always request a sputum culture. Once the sputum culture has been resulted, follow up with the medical provider to make sure the appropriate treatment is being administered. Two weeks ago, my trachea became very irritated and scratchy. It was painful to swallow and my voice was very weak. Two days later, my sputum changed colors. It became a dark yellow. Additionally, it became very thick and sticky. When my sputum becomes like this, it is a sign I have an infection. The following day, I had a low-grade fever and my joints and muscles hurt. It was very difficult to breathe and it felt as though there was an elephant on my chest. Thankfully, my doctor prescribed antibiotics. The next day, my trachea was extremely painful. I could not inflate the cuff on my tracheostomy tube because the inflated cuff caused a lot of pain. If I did inflate the tracheostomy tube cuff, I started coughing. I left the cuff on my tracheostomy tube deflated. <coughs> I slept poorly and I had a terrible headache when I woke up from sleep. Thankfully, after one day of leaving the cuff down on my tracheostomy tube, my trachea healed enough to allow me to inflate my tracheostomy tube cuff again. After one week of taking antibiotics, the infection seems to have cleared. I am so thankful and grateful my trachea has healed and my voice has returned. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.